guys, I want you to come over here and look what we got going on onto Google, and then I'm going to type right into that URL browser, ord-oracle.com. Uh, this is Tim Ord. He comes on every Tuesday and Thursday, the Tom O'Brien Show, and we love his analysis. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. So, We're happy uh, to have you. What are we uh, looking at today? I know we got the weekly SPX on chart one. Right. It's just This is a quick view. It kind of looks at the bigger picture. What happens at um, uh, actually... Uh, the bottom window is the weekly SPX VIX ratio. Next window up is the weekly SPX. And I want to show here, uh, as the VIX actually gives you a warning, pretty much the VIX leads the S&Ps a lot of times. And the SPX VIX ratio, if it if the, S, if the SPX makes a higher high, then the ratio makes a, a lower high, which is all the kind of shaded pink areas are times when the market's uh, probably going into a short or at least a, uh, a short term high, if not an intermediate term high. <laughs> Excuse me, intermediate term high. But right now, uh, to the far right, uh, the SPs has made higher highs, and along with the uh, uh, SPX VIX ratio, it's made a higher high. So there could be short term pullbacks, but the intermediate term trend is still up. So let's kind of look at the uh, the next uh, next window and see where we are right now. Perfect. Which is uh, chart two. Fantastic. And, um, uh, well, first thing, uh, the top window is the daily SPX. And uh, I got blue there. We gapped above the previous high of uh, late March, early April. And we gapped above it and we left the gap open. And last Thursday, we tested that gap <laughs> on uh, – 5% lighter volume. You need at least 10% lighter volume to really conclude that would have been a low and the market starts going back up. Since it was about 5% lighter, there's a good chance that last Thursday's low, which is a circled in red um, there on the chart, we're, uh, we go back down and usually test that that uh, low again. And we're doing it as we're talking right now. Yeah. And uh, uh, so what's important here, what needs to happen is volume needs to be 10% lighter than last Thursday's volume. And uh, this chart I drew about a couple hours ago, it's obviously lighter there, but as we're going closer to the close, you know, close is approximately about a half hour away, and volume's going to be at least uh, 10% lighter, if not even greater. Yeah. So probably, in my opinion, we're probably making a low right here, right now. And to help, to help substantiate that setup, if you go down to the second window up from the bottom, mm -hmm. that's the VIX. And uh, like I said before, VIX usually leads uh, the way uh, uh, in regarding the SPYs. And if you notice, the uh, the SPY right now is down about 0.62. And if you notice, the VIX is pretty much down a little bit, but on the chart is down. But as we're talking right now, it's still down from yesterday. So if you get two, if you get the VIX down. And the SP down, so the VIX trades the opposite of the uh, SPY. If the, if the SPY is down, the VIX is supposed to be up. But nice. since the SPY is down and the VIX are also down, that's actually a bullish divergence. So it kind of helps support that we're making our low uh, because we got 10% lighter volume test from last Thursday's low, and, and the VIX is not rising here. I'll put it that way. It's... it's, it's it's at best as even. So that's that's a diversion. So uh, a lot of times these lows don't form on Thursdays. A lot of times they form on Fridays. So we may have a little bit more back and forth tomorrow. But right now, I think we're in the vicinity of making a low. We've virtually gone well, sideways for the last, uh, looks like about, what, two weeks, three weeks now. Uh, so this is probably, again, the halfway point of the next move up. Right. So it's not of a significant top of any consequence, but is today going to be the low? Uh, there's a good chance, but like again, if you're Thursday's not the best time, but a lot of times Fridays are making the low, so we may see uh, a, a bit more low tomorrow, but not much. I put it that way. Absolutely. I hear the music. Yeah, Tim, stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we are currently joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, 
We were just looking at chart two before the break. We were talking about the uh, VIX and the SPY both being down, which is a bullish divergence. And then the music rang. Right. So. Yep. And also, when you break, you know, right now, this is the last thing on the SPYs here. Yeah. But we're breaking the previous low of the last Thursday. And to break a previous low, you should have a sign of strength, which is basically a big price move and an increase in volume. And both of those things are not happening. Right. So this is, again, probably the low right here. But I'm not sure what tomorrow is going to bring. But uh, anyhow, price-wise, we're setting at the low. It flipped to chart three. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, okay, t uh, this is a monthly chart. Month ends tomorrow. May 31st is tomorrow. And uh, so this is going to kick in most lightly. I mean, days, I guess uh, things can happen, but uh, there's a, probably a 95 or I don't know, probably higher than that, 99% chance that these uh, three charts or these three indicators are going to kick in on Friday's close. And the bottom window is the monthly GDX GLD ratio. Uh, the next higher one uh, is the uh, month, the higher window rather, is the monthly cumulative advanced decline. And the top window is the cumulative monthly up down volume. So to get these signals, uh, you get one is, is pretty bullish. You get uh -huh. two, that's really bullish. You get all three, there, there's a high probability that this is going to work out. And to get the signal, you need these three indicators to close above the mid Bollinger band. So it doesn't try to pick out the bottom. What it tries to do is catch you uh, catch the trend. So that's why I did, kind of designed this. Yep. And the red lines on the chart, uh, the horizontal lines on the chart, are times when the uh, all three indicators fell below their mid Bollinger band. The blue lines are the times when it, when all three went above their mid Bollinger bands. And so right now, the last time this indicator gave a signal was back, looks like about January 2021. And I showed this on this uh, chart before in the past. And it gave a sell signal. And it had, actually did have a full, uh, did have a failure back in 2023. Uh, both of them got just barely above their mid Bollinger bands and fell back down. So what's the chances of that happening again? A pretty slim. Normally you get one, you get a fail signal of the, one time, the second time around is probably for real. But we got a lot of different indicators saying the, the same thing and, uh, and different types of indicators. But right now, if you look far to the right, um, uh, as a blown up window there, and you can see all three are actually above their mid Bollinger Bands. Yeah. So, but today's not Friday. These, all three of them got a hold above mid Bollinger Bands uh, tomorrow. And if you do, you're probably looking at a multi at least a multi-month rally, if not a multi-year uh, rally. Previous signals at this time, the shortest distance was one and a half years. The longest distance was uh, four years. So this is really going to open the door. And the middle chart there, uh, the monthly GDX, which is the second window down, we did break the neckline of a head and shoulders bottom, and I got circled there kind of in green on the volume area. You need kind of a uh, increase in volume, and if you can see, there was an increase in volume. So, my opinion, we did jump that uh, what I call neckline with the sign of strength. So that's actually more confirmation. So that neckline becomes support now. So this, uh, what, what I'm seeing, and on on a lot of different gold stocks, looking at the monthly charts, there's I don't care if you're looking at small st uh, stocks or big stocks. All of them are kind of crossing their mid Bollinger bands, so this is, you know, this is going to be a hot issue, I guess, for for quite some time. So let's, let's flip to chart four. Yeah, so we're on chart four now. All right, chart four. Th these are the same indicators, but this is on a daily time frame, so it kind of looks at the shorter term picture. And again, it's the same type setup. You have to jump above the mid Bollinger band. You, we did back in the first of March, and we were just basically running above the mid Bollinger band. So this one, this chart, since it's on a daily, the dailies can flip back and forth quite a bit. Uh, the weeklies are less, and the monthly is pretty rare. Uh, but right now, they pretty much stayed above the mid Bollinger band, and as I circled in red, where we are right now, and all three of them, even on a short term basis, were still above the mid Bollinger band. Um, and also, I labeled 
on the GDX chart, I, I got one, two, three, four uh, labeled on a chart. That's an Elliott Wave uh, uh, type thing. And so I'm thinking what we're in right now is a five wave up, and we're in the midst of fifth wave right now. So this is this is a fifth wave up. Uh, once it ends, you'll probably have some sort of a consolidation. But I don't see no ending on a short-term basis here. Uh, mm. This type of indicator remains bullish. And we can look at it, some other indicators, too. Let's look at go to uh, page five, uh, chart One five. Second. Let me get it up here. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, the bottom window is the up-down volume on a 50-day average. It's not cumulative, but it's 50-day average. And in general, when this indicator, this works best for the GDX, up, down, whatever. Uh, but anyhow, when it's up above zero, GDX is an uptrend. And all that green shaded area are times when the GDX is, or this indicator is stayed above zero and we're well above zero right now we're coming in plus uh, about plus 17 and it's holding above zero so right now the previous ending uh, uh, chart four is on a buy signal this is short term uh chart five or uh chart five is on a buy signal because it's holding above a zero and uh, uh so i don't know how high we're going to go but it's not the time to sell yet. So let's even look look at a shorter term chart. Let's go to chart six. Okay. And this is a, a previous chart was 50 day average. <clears throat> this is an 18 day average. So it's a little over a three week uh, deal. Same thing. It acts a little bit faster and uh, it whips around a little bit uh, stronger, but it gave a buy signal back in first part of March, which is basically the green area is, is when it's above for this uh Indicators, or actually there's two of them here, that stay on a bicycle. Both indicators have to stay above minus 10. So the bottom window is the 18-day average up down, or uh, yeah, up down volume. Next higher window is the GDX advanced decline on 18-day average, and they're not even weakening here. They're just holding strong, you know, around the plus 10, plus 15 area. And this is updated today, so on, even on a short-term basis. Uh, the, the decline is still expected to continue on a short-term basis. Awesome. Tim, stay right there. Folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle after this break. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, before the break, we were looking at GDX. So I think it was an 18-day up-down volume. This is chart six. Yeah, there's not a lot to say about it. It's just it's bullish. And it's not even doing a negative divergence right now. So don't know how long the rally will last. You know, we've gone on for, well, all of all of March, all of April, all of May so far. And, um, you know, maybe July. I don't know. Uh, but if you have a five count up, usually that's what goes on in an impulse wave. You have a three count going up. That's a corrective wave. This is Elliott Wave type things. And since we're having a five count up, we're in the fifth wave right now, so whatever comes next will be just an ABC down probably, then another five count up from that. But even the Elliott waves are giving bullish signs here. Uh, so, anyhow, oh, it looks good, and it's not looking – it looks good for at least the next year and a half because that's about the minimum. Uh, if you go back to the, the monthly charts, that's the minimum once those – uh, charts kick in, uh, you know, the minimum is like a year and a half, and the longest one is four years. So yeah. the gold issues are, are probably going to have really a big run. So let's, let's take a look at uh, chart seven. Absolutely. We have it up right now. Uh, chart seven, uh, this chart goes back to 2008, and all it is 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 the bullish percent index for the gold miners index. So it measures all the buy and sell signals using the point and figure method all the stocks in the gold miners index. And what I think I want to point out on this is usually I have a green area there and then I have a red area on top of that. But the green area is ideal uh, for a continuation of a bull run if it stays between basically 60 to, to 95. Uh, that's, in other words, the stocks in the gold miners index are, are, are that are on point and figure buy signals are like, uh, you know, 60% of them to 95% of them. If you get above 95%, uh, 
which is that red area up there, usually that's too that's too much, and usually you get tops. So that's what happened in 2016. 100 percent of the stocks in Gold Miners Index were on bicycles, and it turned out to be a top for a multi-year period. Same thing happened back in uh, 2000, mid 2020. About 100 percent of the stocks were on bicycles. And the market consolidated for the next four years. Mm-hmm. So you really don't want to have 100% of the stocks on buy signals because that's too much. Uh, just too much. Yeah, I get so, it. So, yeah. as a matter of fact, even in 2011, uh, I think it was about, yeah, about 95% of them got on buy signals. So we're, we're setting at around 90% right now. So ideally, you, you don't want to go much higher than this, especially if you get to 95 so something to point out, you know, too much of a good thing a lot of times can <laughs> yeah. be a, a spell trouble. So, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, consolidations are actually good for the market. And so I, I don't want this gold market just to keep on running, even though it may run for another uh, couple, three, four, five weeks. I hope it doesn't run for the next three, four, five months. If it did something like that, it would probably be an ending type situation, right. uh, which is not good for everybody. So yeah, you get, like, overbought, gonna, essentially, right? Probably so. peak out in July and, and start some sort of consolidation then. Fantastic. So. Fantastic. That's, so. that's great for gold, and definitely, and folks, if you, you know, want these charts, I'm going to put them in the Tiger's Den at the end of it. You can also send me an email as well at jacob at tfnn.com. Tim, uh, is there anything else you wanted to look at chart-wise? No, uh, but that was kind of it. So it's, you know, the S&Ps are probably making a low Yep. In this vicinity right now, and uh, the gold market, chances are we're probably going to. Uh, the gold market probably has bottom in March, and we're actually probably bottom in October of 2023. That was the major low. The next impulse wave has started probably March 1st, and this next impulse wave could last uh, months, if not years. So it's, it should be a really good time. A lot of these penny, a lot of these gold stocks are penny stocks. And most of them are probably going to uh, turn into, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars. Some of them. So I think this is probably similar yeah. to what happened back in two thousand, which I was part of too. So a lot of similarities between now and then. So we'll see how it lays out. But right now, both the gold market and the equity market looks pretty good. Fantastic, Tim. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. You can go visit him at the Ord hyphen Oracle dot com. Uh, Tim, we'll see you next Tuesday. Can't wait to hear. And again, you know, we were talking about the SPY with low volume, even looking at the E-mini right now. But if I, you know, pull up the SPY, that's what we were looking at at the beginning of this program, right? We're kind of pulling back a little bit, but the volume just keeps drying up and drying up as it's testing these lower levels, uh, which is a good sign right. uh, for a SPY in general. So, Yeah, yeah SPY, because we're, we're not going to reach, I think, the last high is, uh, um, last Thursday was close to $60 million. We're not even going to close. come close to that, but yeah. it only has to be, uh, well, six million, be fifty-four million or less. And if it happens, then the the odds are high that uh, this is probably uh, the low right here. But I'm still thinking if it's not today, it's probably tomorrow. So either today or tomorrow is going to be the low. Absolutely, so. Tim. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next Tuesday. All right. Thank you.